Hi, Denise here from Sound Healing Instrument Shop. We're really lucky today to have Luke with us. Luke is the talented artist who makes our hand pans. And Luke is gonna talk to us about how each model, or not model, but material sounds different. Yeah. And then about care and a few other questions. So first of all, do you wanna introduce yourself a little yeah. bit? Yeah, so I'm Luke Dupuis. Uh, I've been a maker of the hand pan in Hamilton, Ontario for roughly about 10 years now. Uh, I started, I've started my journey about 10 years ago, uh, traveling out to California to make instruments, to learn how and come back here uh, to provide this service to this community, which is so needed. So uh, today we have three different types of materials that I'm going to kind of explain very briefly on what the different characteristics are uh, and uh, yeah, what you can expect from that. So. The first material we'll talk about is the raw, low carbon steel. So that's essentially a, a very malleable uh, steel that actually a lot of cars are made out of. So all the metal on the cars is actually made out of this material. Uh, and so the sound you'll get out of that is a pretty good sustain. Uh, with more of a metallic touch uh, to it. So, and when you say sustain, you mean how long? How long, yes, the notes ring for. And I know yeah. that, but I know a lot of my listeners yeah. don't know no, that. That's, that's exactly. important to mention, yeah. <laughs> exactly, so that's how long it's just going to keep singing yeah. in a sense. Yes, okay. yes, so pretty good sustain on this one. It sings for a decent amount of time, uh, and you'll get more of like a metallic tone. So a lot of the, those higher frequencies will ring out. Okay, so let's just like yeah. two second play. Yeah. So we can... And good, it rings for a, a long time too. So yeah, so now if you take this material actually, and then you nitride it, uh, which is a process where they put gas onto the the surface of the metal. It adds a, a rust protection and also uh, dampens uh, some of the qualities because it hardens the steel. So now you'll get more of like a clay pot kind of ceramic sound and that kind of sounds like this. Much shorter sustain. The sound cuts off much sooner, yes. right? Yeah, so, you could definitely hear that. So this really played for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. It's still going. Yeah. And now it's finished. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So much shorter sustain, and but a lot less of those high frequencies. You don't really hear much of the the metal aspects uh, through this drum. Okay, okay, so neither one is better than the other, just No, different. no, it's, it all comes down really to preference at the end of the day and what you're looking to uh, get out of your hand pan. So that's where, for example, like when, when we move on to now stainless steel, so stainless steel is kind of an interesting thing of both of, both of these materials. So what you'll have is long sustain, so the notes sing for a very long time, but it doesn't have quite a metallic property to it. So the sound will be very uh, like rich and, um, and subtle in that sense. So that'll sound a little bit more like this. And you still get that sustain. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, can you, so before we set up, we found, unfortunately there's not three F sharps on all three, but you have F sharp, F sharp, and F. F. Yeah. Can you play each one so we can compare? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here's the F sharp on the stainless. Just ended there. F sharp on the, uh, on the nitride. Cuts right out. Much quieter yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. And then the F on the uh, raw steel. Just stop there. Yeah, so a little bit longer sustain on the stainless than on the raw. And then the, yes, the nitride is of course quite dampened when it comes to sustain. Okay. Yeah. So now what's the care on these? Because I know when I was reading on the internet, there is um, some you want near the water, some you don't. Oh, hi, yeah. Chester. Are you coming to visit? <laughs> oh, Chester loves to photobomb, don't you? Yeah. Hey, come over here. Come lay down. All right. 
So, sorry about that. <laughs> this is what's happened when you go live. Um, yeah, so what's the care on each of these? Okay, Are so some a better environment than other places? I'd say, I'd say in terms of rust protection, your nitrided will actually be your best bet, even over the stainless steel. Uh, this is a type of stainless steel that still can rust uh, at the end of the day. So it's really important that on all the hand pins actually that we keep a light coat of oil on them at all times, especially in the summer, it gets very humid. So we want to make sure that we're uh, applying oil, especially if we're playing every day, we want to uh, uh, apply it pretty well almost every day, just a light coat. Okay, what yeah. kind of oil? Uh, you can honestly use almost any oil. A lot of people use coconut oil, uh, but I find coconut oil gets a bit clumpy. So if you check out this product called Frog Lube Paste, you can buy a little jar of it uh, and it'll last years. Um, okay, so we'll find a link and put that on the website yeah. for everybody so they yeah. know where that is. Okay, yeah. so, so sorry, we don't Oh yeah, so, so so in terms of care, uh, I would say that this one is the less likely to rust. Uh, and then these two require uh, much more tentative care uh, towards making sure that they don't rust. And in the event that they do rust, it's really not, it won't change the quality of the sound at all. Your pan will just look more like it's pulled out of the earth, which could be really cool in itself, right? Some people yeah. let them rust and it's okay. It's, it's to each their own with what they want to do with their instrument. Yeah. Okay. If someone's not playing it every day, yeah. because life gets in the way and it's going to be sitting on the shelf yeah. and it's like, I haven't touched my pan in a month. Yeah. Should they be oiling it once a week? No, like no. It, especially if you live in air condition, uh, if you just have a light coat of oil, it will last like over a year, to be honest, without okay. if you're not playing it. Yeah, so they so as so long as there's a light coat of oil and especially if you're in like AC, then you're good to go with any of these actually. Okay, and if you're not with AC, then uh then I would I if you're if you're not playing it and you still have a decent coat of oil, it still technically should be fine. Okay, so it's yeah. just the playing because the oil is coming off yeah, of it exactly. that you're putting it on. Okay. And sometimes, you know, we, when we eat certain things, there's a little bit of salt that we get on our hands from foods that we eat. And salt is actually quite corrosive for metal. So uh, that's also why it's important to re-oil because our hands have salts and whatnot. Perfect. Yeah. Um, now, they all come with a case? Yes, they all come with, with a hard case uh, for the larger ones. And for the mini one, I have a smaller travel size case uh, that's super lightweight and nice to go like on a hike. And you can just pull out your pan really easy and, and start playing. And it fits really, really nice on the lap, the uh, small one right here. Perfect. Yeah. So for playing, because I know when people come to the stores, like how do I hold this? Like. I know we can put it in your lap. Are there yeah. any other options for Yeah, you can, you can use a stand, like even a snare stand is, is not a bad idea. So long as you put on a couple tennis balls on the end, what, what you really are looking for in a stand is something that has a soft material uh, because anything hard, like if you ever put your hand pan on a table, you'll get uh, really, really dampened tone. So you wanna make sure that whatever stand you end up using, that it's uh that it's soft okay and that yeah. allows the sound to come out the bass hole uh it Do actually that, that doesn't yeah it doesn't actually totally matter the the that sound hole is actually sound hole it's not like an acoustic guitar it's not it doesn't oh, work the same so i learned something new yeah so so really what it's for is actually getting inside the hand pen with a hammer and actually tuning the notes from the inside okay oh yeah. which leads to this is so cool so we went and visited luke and you stand out among so many other artists because there's no pneumatic tools. Yeah. Um, you see videos on how to make it, you see them with this pneumatic hammer. Tell us yeah. about how you make them. Yeah, so I actually make my hand pans uh, completely from sheet metal working uh, by hand from start to finish. I use no pneumatic tools and I use no hydroforming. Hydroforming is actually quite a uh, common practice when it comes to making hand pans, uh, which is using water to form the metal with lots of pressure. Yeah, so really, really cool process, but I've decided to keep it uh, from the fundamentals of making these instruments for hundreds of years, even with the, uh, uh, with from uh, Trinidad, that's how they would make them. They would actually take cannonballs and drop the cannonballs on barrels to form the steel. So a very fundamental way of approaching making an instrument, but I feel like it really helps me infuse more of my work and my soul and my love into these instruments when I do them from start to finish by hand, so. Cool, yeah. awesome. Well, so one other question we have is, are there advantages to hand hammering rather than using the pneumatic tools? Mm. 
Okay, so uh, it's actually not about the pneumatic tools more than it's about the hydroforming process. So the hydroforming process is how you initially get your salad bowl is what it looks like. Because you're starting with plain flat you, yeah, sheet metal. All, all, yeah, all hand pans technically start off with sheet metal. And then the first process, uh, which is essentially making a salad bowl before we actually make our notes, uh, there's different ways of going about that. There's deep pressing, which really dulls the metal and makes it sound not very good at all. So those will be like your, your Amazon kind of instruments, right? Uh, then you have hydroforming, uh, which is definitely an improvement from deep pressing. Uh, and then you have hand hammering, which is also a different uh, uh, type of result than hydroforming. So uh, I will say that at the end of the day, it, when it comes down to hydroformed and hand sunk, uh, it will come down to preference as well. Um, you will get, out of a hand hammered instrument, you will get very, very lively tone with uh, really, really good harmonic presence. So all of the extra notes in the hand pan will be very alive, which gives a, a lot of character. And, and actually it's a very unique thing to come across these days because most hand pans actually are Hydroform. So hand pans that are hand sunk are definitely very, very hard to come by and very unique in tone. As for hydroformed, we'll have a little bit more of a, of a kind of a collapsed and controlled tone, uh, which is also very beautiful as well. Uh, but personally, it's another reason why I've stuck with hand hammering as it's such a unique timber and I really like to stand out amongst other makers. And uh, yeah, so I've decided to hand hammer, even though it's actually very hard on your body to hand hammer, but I'm still so young, so <laughs> you can get these while I'm young. <laughs> yeah, so. I know, and he was already talking about his sore shoulder when he was looking at the 48 inch chow gong that hangs yeah. up here. He's like, oh my shoulder. Yeah, it's already, you know? <laughs> so, so interesting, so you mentioned, so what was that first, the real cheap way that Amazon does it? The Amazon is deep pressing. So they, they pretty well have a mold with already, I'm pretty sure anyway, they already have the notes in the mold. So they just press the material and that's why you'll get like a really dull, tinny, very small sound because there wasn't really very much work done to it. And that's actually why the price point is where they are, of course, okay. because the turnover time is very easy. As for me, it takes me about 30 hours on average to hand hammer these from start to finish. Uh, and then of course you'll get much more lively, beautiful, uh, unique timber uh, okay, for that yes. reason. Yes, and yeah. that's the price. And then plus two, this is the wear and tear on your body as oh, well. Oh yeah, for sure, yeah. lots of that. Okay, lots yeah, no, I that. asked that because I've had two clients bring in their hand pants like, oh, I got it on Amazon for, or not Amazon, on Facebook for yeah. like $200. And yeah. why doesn't it sound the same? Yeah. And it's like. Yeah, it's like buying a guitar at Toys R Us. Yeah, yeah. It's you get what you pay, but now we understand why because they just stamped it. Yeah. Boom. Nothing. Bada boom, bada bing. Just yes. In and yeah. out. <laughs> okay, and then yeah. I know you've got a tuner app, so then you're getting all the notes just exact. Yes, exactly. So, so everything is tuned to uh, 440. These hand pans, uh, and give or take five cents in the uh, in the uh, different harmonics. <laughs> Yeah. So can you show how you got three different sounds on one note? How? Okay. What did you do? Yeah. So so essentially in in each note on a hand pan, uh, what would be the easiest one to show? Sure. We'll move this out of the way. Yeah. So we'll use this note as an example. So on every note on a hand pan, there resides uh, three main frequencies. Uh, there's a frequency that resides in in the diagonal, which is called the fundamental. Uh, and then if you can see how there's a long Let's axis here. Let's hear the here. fundamental. Yeah. So boom, boom, boom. So that's your low G. And then in this, in this uh, long axis right here, I actually tune that to the octave of that. So you have your low G, your high G. Boom, boom, boom. And then in the short axis, uh, I tune that to the fifth, which is above the higher G. So then you have this. So. Actually, every note is tuned that way, which is why hand pans are totally a very complex sound because every time you hit one note, you're actually listening to three notes in one. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I can't wait to start playing. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> 
touch. Oh, now they're very, very intuitive too. Yes, very intuitive. I mean, I've never touched this one. Nowhere near like Luke Play. <laughs> awesome. Still really great. So, yeah. Fantastic. So yeah, if you ever wanted a hand pan, we've got them here. If we don't have them, we will send you directly to Luke and he'll help you create a gorgeous instrument. Yeah. Thank you so much yeah, for joining us. Thank you too. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you. <laughs>